My name is Samantha Nicholas. At the age of six, I was molested by my stepbrother. Um, I didn't understand what was going on at that time. All I knew is that I was told I wasn't allowed to say anything about it. When I finally realized it, it ate me alive every day. I felt like this awful, worthless person that just didn't belong on the earth and that didn't belong anywhere. You know, my mom was an atheist, so I never had a connection with God. The only connection of God I had was going to my dad's house. And you know, when you're getting molested by your brother and you're going to church and it doesn't make sense to you and you don't think God's really there for you. When I got into high school, I met some friends and um, I started doing drugs with them. At the age of 16, my mom wanted to know what was going on in my life. I was isolating myself, wasn't talking to anybody. Sweet, smart Samantha turned into straight F Samantha to cut myself Samantha to I hate my life Samantha and she really wanted to know why. Um, I had already told her previously about my brother early on in my childhood but I don't think she took it seriously. But when I told her the second time, things started to change. And I thought just maybe I'll be able to breathe again. But it didn't work out that way for me. My dad um, didn't take it the way you would think a dad would take his little girl being molested. I kind of imagined my whole life, if I ever came out about it, that my dad, of all people, would have my back. And he didn't and uh, he chose my molester over me, and that was really hard, you know, and I started just wanting to die. Because if I wasn't worth loving to somebody else, to my own father, wasn't worth fighting for, then I didn't want to fight anymore. I got bad grades, dropped out, you know, got kicked out of my mom's house, moved to couch, couch was homeless on the streets for a while, and I was 17 years old. I'm about 18, almost 18. Sitting in a rehab, trying to call every number I could for someone to come pick me up, and no one would pick up the phone. And if they did and they found out it was me, they'd hang up. Everyone would give up on me because I had burned all my bridges. Addiction took over my life. You know, if I was sober, no, there was none of that because I couldn't be. Like, I had all this pain. Like, the enemy was just so deep on my soul that I had to fill that void. I had to fill that void. I didn't have God. I had to fill that void. We had a meeting in the rehab and my dad and my mom came and my mom looked at me straight in the eye and said, you're my daughter, so I love you, but I don't like you. And I think that was the point when I realized I hated me too. Two years later when I hit my rock bottom, I couldn't stop drinking and I just wanted to kill myself. I had attempted suicide six times before I got back to the rescue mission this time in 2015. I'm now one year clean. I now have a good relationship with my daughter. The CARES house has changed my life because it brought me something better than money. It brought me God. It brought me Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ works at the CARES house. I know that this is real change because I think it's the first time that I can look in the mirror because of what the Caris House has instilled in me and because of all this love from donors and volunteers that's been thrown at me. I can look in the mirror and say, I am beautiful, I'm beloved, I'm a princess because my father is the king and I don't need to fill that void anymore because Jesus already fills it.